Hello, I'm Jason Monette, Senior Lender for WBD, your business finance resource. And I'd like to talk to you today about some of the recent enhancements to the SBA 504 refinance program. What you see before you are the slides that we'll cover today, the sections of the presentation. And I'd like to start by identifying where these changes came from. As many of, may, of you may recall, there was an Economic Aid Act passed in late December 2020 that called for enhancements to the SBA 504 program, which were officially made available and enacted into law on July 29th, 2021. If I had to point to three or four key provisions in the cha recent changes, these would be the main ones. We are now able to use SBA 504 to refinance government guaranteed debt, whether it be SBA 7A or 504 or other federal government guaranteed debt. We'll cover the parameters of that in a little while. The notion of qualified debt, which is key to access the SBA 504 program, typically or historically, we've needed to have that qualified debt be in place for at least two years. That period has been shortened to six months since the date of the last disbursement on the note. There's also the requirement that the loan has to have been current for the last 12 months. And there's we've also been able to reinstate the alternative job retention goal for the 504 program, meaning that any job that the business has today, any employees that they have today count towards the job requirement. Why, as a reminder, why would you want to use SBA 504 refinance? Well, it really comes down to a few key benefits. Um, you're able to restructure the existing debt of the borrower at historically low rates and provide terms up to 25 years. When I say historically low rates, I mean rates below 3%. We're also able to provide term cash out up to 20% of the appraised value to be used for business expenses. And of course, by offering this program, you're positioning your customers for long-term success. Qualified debt, as I mentioned, is a key provision to using the SBA 504 refinance program. We're going to cover some of the changes related to that and some things that have stayed the same. Uh, as you may know, a qualified debt has to have been used at least 85% for fixed assets. So when the original extension of credit occurred, we have to be able to document that that original loan was used 85% for real estate or equipment related costs. Uh, the other 15% is flexibility, flexible in terms of use. Uh, as I noted, one key change was shortening the period from two years to six months for how long the qualified debt must needs to have been out there. And again, that is since the date of the last disbursement. We also have to continue to show that the debt was incurred for the benefit of the small business, that that part has not changed. Uh, similar to the term requirement, um, the, the fact that it's been secured by eligible fixed assets was, has now been shortened from a two-year period to a six-month period. As I mentioned, they've also deleted the requirement for currency. However, we do have to show, as I'll talk about in a minute, that there is no uh, ability or, or reasonableness that the loan will be uh, refinanced, a loan that's in its position to sustain a loss. Uh, the other key provision is noted, and uh, we can now include our, uh, the federal government guaranteed debt, and I'll talk much more about that. Let's get right into it. So under certain conditions, we are able to use the 504 refi program to uh, refinance existing federally government guaranteed debt. In the case of a 504 structure, we have to take out both the third party lender loan that's in a first position and the 504 debenture. Unless the third party lender loan is already paid in full, then you can take out just the remaining debenture. For an existing 7A loan, um, again, we have that ability to use 504, but we have to document that the present lender is either unwilling or unable to modify the current payment schedule to align with the proposed 504 terms. So that will be key in uh, documenting eligibility for the refi program to use it to refinance a 7A. Um, also in the case of the same institution debt, uh, we're, they're only eligible to refinance the 7A if the lender is unable to modify the terms because that loan has been sold in the secondary market. So that is gonna be a, a barrier and a key provision in looking at refinancing your own 7A loans. Uh, these, all of these uh, requirements I should mention uh, do already appear in the SOP as it relates to uh, SBA 7A refinancing existing 7A. So the, the, the stipulations were really modeled after the existing SOP. We also have to show that there's a substantial benefit. What it basically means is that we have to show a 10% cash flow savings on the new installment amount. And that's after accounting for prepayment penalties and other fees uh, re related to the new transaction. 
Uh, NADCO, who I am grateful for preparing many of these slides, that's our trade association based out of Washington, D.C. They have prepared a substantial benefits calculator that our team has access to and can provide. And just to give you a quick snapshot of what that looked like, a lot of numbers here, but it, what it basically does is it compares the payments between the existing financing scenario and the proposed one, um, and you're able to determine whether you meet that 10% savings or not. One great area is the ability to refinance debt other than SBA 7A that was uh, originated in our federal guarantee program. Uh, USDA, of course, springs to mind in this instance. We have to look at the, those agencies' guidelines and program SOPs in order to determine whether the refinance is allowed. Um, and if it is, then we can proceed with the 504 refinancing request. This is an area that we expect to be able to provide additional information as we go forward. The current on all payments due uh, requirement was removed. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we do still have to have payment transcripts showing what the history was, look at those in the context of prudent lending standards. And then again, we can't refinance a, a creditor that's in a position to sustain a loss. So that's been a longstanding SBA requirement as well. There are a number of things that remain the same related to the 504 refinance program. We still have nine months to disperse. In other words, close and fund the debentures once the refinance is authorized by SBA. We can extend that for an additional six months for good cause. New businesses, there has been no change. In order to access the refi program, the business must have been in operation for at least two years. That's two years from the date of their first sale. So uh, while the qualified debt period has been shortened to six months, the new business period has not. Um, eligible fixed assets, of course, we have to make sure that those were uh, obviously um, used by the small business in its operation. Um, and then we also have to look at the 504 refi project is determined by the appraised value of those assets. And it's important to note that that is true even for a loan that has a project that's been out there less than two years. Historically, two years is the, is the point where SBA allows us to use appraised value. But for this refinance program, even if it's only been out there for six months, the qualified debt, we can, use an, we, we can use appraised value. So that may create some opportunities if there's been some escalation in value potentially in the real estate. Loan to value is also not changed. We can go up to 90% if it's just a straight debt refi, up to 85% if the borrower wants to take some cash out for those eligible business expenses, which are also limited at up to 20% LTV. Uh, there's been no change in terms of how eligible business expenses are determined. Uh, we can estimate costs that run through the profit and loss statement of the company for out up to 18 months to get to that number. We can also include a uh, line of credit balances and potentially business credit cards. It's, it's actually been fairly easy for us to document eligible business expenses and use that feature of the program. Let's take a look at a few case studies using the debt refinance without expansion. So in this case, uh, we want to provide some, uh, there's no cash out for EBE. So in this scenario, you can see we have a property that appraised at $5 million and they have an existing balance of 4.4 million as well as closing costs of 100,000. Essentially what we're looking to do here is just fully advance up to 90% of the appraised value, take out that existing $4.4 million loan as well as the closing costs and use the borrower's equity in the real estate of 500,000 as their required down payment. You can see we meet the 90% LTV with the 50, 40, 10 breakdown in the sources of funds. Next example, another one without cash for eligible business expenses. In this case, the appraised value was at 5 million and they have $3 million of an existing debt. Um, this stru structure ends up a little bit different because we have uh, excess borrower contribution here. But again, the appraised value of 5 million determines the 504 project and we're able to potentially split the loan amounts right down the middle with a third party lender, uh, with a third party lender at 1.5 million and us at 1.5 million. So a creative way to restructure that debt, again, provide access to that long term fixed rate and restructuring even what may be a loan that's at a healthy loan to value. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples that do involve cash out for eligible business expenses. Uh, this one, we have an appraised value of $1.5 million and existing debt of only, uh, that should say $1 million, excuse me. Uh, we're able to provide up to 20% uh, cash out related to um, the LTV. So in this case, the max 
of course, comes out to 2.75 million, or I'm sorry, excuse me, approximately 275,000. That's actually less than the 300,000 that would be available if you use 20% of the $1.5 million appraisal. So you can see we end up financing 1,275,000 with the bank at 45% and us in the second at 40% or, at, at or 600,000. Uh, one more example of cash out for EBE. We have an appraised value. Excuse me. This looks like uh, actually the same slide. So I'm going to just go through that. Uh, but there is another example here with EBE. I apologize for the, the glitch there. Uh, appraised value of 5 million, existing loan on the 504 side of 2 million, and an existing debenture of 1.5. Um, so what we're looking at here is refinancing the existing 504 structure plus, plus including some cash out for eligible business expenses. Um, in this case, Again, we're looking at uh, roughly 15% LTV and in, in rolling that in. So we got the 3.5 million plus the 750,000 total financing of 4.25 split on sort of a 45, 40, 15 basis. Again, the LTV cap, again, when using cash out is 85% and we're able to stay within that in this example. Final case study with numbers as it relates to debt refi with, without expansion. In this case, we have appraisal of 1.5 million. We have an existing first mortgage loan of 750,000 and a line of credit for 250. Uh, again, a line of credit is an appropriate use to, for, to use for cash out to pay down. So we're able to uh, provide up to 275 in this example for that, plus refinance the existing debt. You can see the end financing breakdown comes out to that same 45, 40, 15 split. An example, and this is a critical example, if the borrower happens to own a property free and clear and would like to tap equity for renovations or any other use, it is simply not eligible for 504 refinance. There must be a qualified debt on every 504 debt refi project. Similarly, if there's an example of where a borrower has a line of credit in place that was used for other things, various business operating expenses secured by the property, that also is not eligible because it's a requirement that the qualified debt was used to acquire or improve eligible fixed assets. So again, no go on debt refi for expansion in this example. That pretty well covers it in terms of changes to the refi program without expansion. There also has been a notable enhancement to the debt refi with expansion. Historically, we were limited to refinancing 50% of the new money in an expansion project. So if we had a million dollar expansion, we could, we could refinance only 500,000 of existing mortgage debt. That has now changed to 100%. So if we have a million dollar expansion, we can refinance up to a million dollars in existing debt. Uh, this this um, branch of the refi program does include the requirement that the borrower has been current on payments due for the past 12 months. So that has not changed with this program. Just a couple of quick examples to walk through here. You can see in this example, we have an appraised value on the property as is for $1 million and an existing mortgage of $700,000. We have new costs conveniently of about $2 million. So uh, what this look, looks to do is outline the eligible structure. Uh, you can see the existing debt is well less than 100% of the new money. So we are able to essentially finance $2.7 million uh, with the new costs of $2 million and the existing debt of $700,000 breaks into a nice 50-40-10 split using the existing equity as borrower contribution. The next example is a little more interesting. We have an appraised value of $3 million and existing debt of 2.5, but the new costs are only $2 million. So what that does is it creates the need to finance or refinance 500,000 of the existing debt outside of the 504 project. So what you can see here is we included 2 million of refinancing within the 504 project, plus the $2 million in new costs. Um, and we were able to essentially provide financing for $4 million within the 504 structure. That left uh, half a million dollars as ineligible and needing to be included, ultimately rolled into the third party lender's first mortgage loan uh, when after the 504 closing. So still able to keep that in a senior position and even roll it into the third party lender loan, uh, but not able to include it um, within the 504 structure itself. Just a few closing additional updates, a reminder that we are actually able to advance up to 90% loan to value on existing 504 loan structures for borrowers that may need cash 
to, for operations. Uh, they, we no longer require improvements be done to the property in order to access this, this subordination. All of this can be done through the WBD uh, servicing department. And here's a quick example of a loan that has been paid down to about seven or six, 760,000 in, in outstanding financing. You can see that we're able to allow you to re-leverage your first mortgage loan up to 740,000 and keep the overall LT, LTV within 90% to access the program. So contact us or our servicing team if you're interested in access.